All right, welcome back to the 30-hour post-licensing course. Once again, remember, if you've got any questions during this course, especially those of you at home, feel free to send me an email at raymond at realuniversity.com. So we're talking about the inspection process, and now I want to look at the other side of the inspection process and on the seller side and what are some of the seller's issues. Now, probably the most important portion of the inspection is the response that comes back from the buyer that will cover all of the buyer's requests. One of the most important fact is you have to understand that you are given a time frame with which to respond to whatever request they have, okay? And in that time frame, it is a very date certain kind of time frame. Date certain means that you must perform by that date. And if you fail to perform, it is assumed that whatever they write is automatically the truth. All right? So what <clears throat> this is saying is if your buyer says, I want you to fix one, two, three, and four, and you have 48 hours to respond, and you fail to respond, the assumption falls towards the positive, meaning that you are, in fact, now going to fix one, two, three, and four. All right? So you have to respond in that time frame with which they have given you with your answer. Now, here's the key thing. Your answer could entirely be that you need an extension, all right? Because if they have said, look, we want you to put a new roof on, a new water heater, a new HVAC, and pour a new driveway, and you've got 12 hours to respond, that obviously is not going to go well on your side because there is no way you are ever going to get valid quotes for all of those things within 12 or 24 hours. Now, let's forget about the fact that that seems a little asinine from the buyer's side to even do that, but it could happen. So you need to make sure that you respond to that, all right? So you would respond with an extension of asking for more time because you actually have to collect all of those different quotes. So you need to understand that. Don't just assume you're going to have more time or take more time and you'll get the quotes back to him because you need to hit that date certain time frame that the buyer has given you to respond inside of their buyer's inspection response, okay? Now, on the seller's counter to a buyer's inspection response or the seller's inspection to a buyer's response, it does not technically work like a counter, which means it kills the original. What you need to th remember is in a seller's inspection response there is a very it works slightly different and how it works slightly different is this in a seller's inspection response notice that it says here the seller agrees to correct the following problems that's all you need to answer so in other words if they say we want one two three and four you don't have to say, we're not doing number one. We're doing number two. We're not doing number three. We're doing number four. It, all you really have to do agrees to correct the following. Buyer will replace the roof with, earn, uh, with insurance money. Buyer will replace the hot water valve. You would not talk about anything else that you're not going to do because it only it takes on the things that you agreed to do as the seller. 
Now, what should you write in this counter? Well, this is another one of those, it could go either way, just like on the buyer side. Because it kind of, you have to remember about what are they asking for? What's the value? Does the seller have the ability or the desire to correct it? Or the know-how in some cases? And there are certain things I think you need to understand as an agent of the seller that you probably need to communicate with your seller. And I have been accused several times of working for the buyer when I was the listing agent because of the way that this comes off when you talk to your seller client. But you have to make sure you explain it correctly. There were things that were asked for by the buyer and when the seller got it, he said, well, I'm not doing that. Let him go. We'll find another buyer. And my comment to him was, David, these are items that any home inspector is going to find. A pressure relief valve. You are, have blanks in your uh, circuit breaker. They need to, you know, you got openings and they got to have uh, blank ones put in for safety. I said, these are things that are going to have to be fixed if you want the price that you are asking now. And it doesn't matter if it's this guy or the next guy or we shut down every buyer until we get somebody again. The problem is these are not questionable, and I'm using finger quotes here, defects. These are obvious defects that are really defective. You know, you do not have a pressure release valve on your hot water heater. That Any home inspector is going to check that. They're all going to find it. And every buyer is going to ask for it. So why don't we fix it and move forward with this buyer rather than getting pissed off and cast this buyer aside and go back on the market for one day, 10 days, 100 days until we find the next buyer whose home inspector will find this as well. So why don't we go ahead and fix it and move forward? I know that you're unhappy, but this is the reality. You know, it's not imaginary that your hot water heater doesn't have a pressure relief valve. All right. Now, I know out there some of you could come up with situations where the buyer thinks it's a defect and the seller doesn't, and that's a whole different ballgame. What I'm talking about right here are things that are very obviously a de defective. You know, and if you know what I'm talking about in this uh, cir uh, breaker panel, the circuit breaker panel, they've got to have it blanked out. They can't have openings so someone could put their hand in. There's got to be a metal uh, blank there. That is obviously every home inspector is going to find that. So you might as well fix it. Plus that one, in that particular case, that cost is so minimal that it's not a big issue. But the pressure hot water valve is a whole different thing. And I don't know how he got one in there without a pressure release valve, but apparently he did. And the home inspector found it. And obviously every home inspector is going to find it. So I told him, I'm like, look, why don't we just go ahead and fix it with this buyer that we've already got scheduled to close? And he, of course, said, well, you know, you're supposed to be working for me, not them. Why are you advocating for their repairs? I said, I'm not. I'm advocating for the repairs that's going to stop you from selling your house. So make sure that when you're countering back to your buyer, and I use the word countering there, and that's probably a bad word because it's really not, quote unquote, works like a counter. Um, you need to understand that there, there may be some things that you have got to go ahead and talk with your client and say, dude, that's going to have to be fixed eventually, so you might as well go ahead and do it now, okay? So keep that in mind when you're countering back, and also understand that anything that affects the value, the safety, and what was it, the longevity or the usefulness of the product is going to be considered a defect. All right, I'll tell you what, let's keep moving on. We're not done yet. 
you're listening to the 30-hour post-licensing course. We're going to come right back with just a few more uh, topics in this lesson.